This is a tutorial on how to use layouts for the Android development. So the layout is how we actually place things on the activities. So I've gone through and I've created a new Android activity named layout de or Android uh, project, pardon me, named layout demo. In it, it's got the standard uh, Android activity activity underscore main dot XML. And we can see here it is. What comes up into it is a relative layout and a text view that's sitting right in the middle. Now, there's a number of layouts we can work with. And so layouts are shown down here. In this tab, we can see all the different layouts, but we'll come back to them and actually work through them. So let's play with the relative layout first. So let's imagine that we want to place some text on the screen. I can simply grab the label and drag it into wherever I want to put it. And we can see where it kind of goes. And if you watch the UI, you can see the arrows kind of snapping to different places to show how it's figuring out where to put it. So for example, when I put it right up here in the top left, it's going to align it to the parent's left and to the parent's top, i.e. put it in the top left. As I move it across a little, we see that now it's going to make it align to parent top, true, but it's going to be aligned to the left of the generated thing, that text in the middle, which is maybe a little funny, maybe not. And you can see here that now I can have it spaced a certain distance from the top and so forth. So let's just drop this in the top left. One piece of text there. Let's move a button, and I'm going to put a button in the bottom right. And we see now it's right up against the bottom right. I can do other things, and let's grab some small text, and let's put it right here. So it's sitting, I'll put it below the hello world, and it's going to be aligned to the left hand side. I can do some, and let's just make this text even shorter, so rather than small text, I'm just going to have it say small. And we'll see now that it's a bit more accentuated what's going on, and I can do this sort of thing. So that's good enough for the moment. I'm going to run this as an Android application. I already have my uh, Android virtual machine up and running, so we'll see it pop up in a second, just to show how it looks on this screen. As expected, text on the top right, or top left, button bottom right, and these line up nicely. So that's pretty powerful. But it turns out that relative layouts have sort of some drawbacks. Let's imagine that what I want is I want on the bottom right here, I want a stack of buttons. So what am I going to do? Well, I'll just put another button in, and I can say, well, I want it to be laid out just like that on top of the next. And let's put in four buttons. Now, we can see here we've got a bit of a challenge because it's wanting to figure out the top. It's going to line up the top with the text I've got in the middle, which isn't really what I want. I want it to be sitting on top of the stack of buttons. So that's maybe not going to be possible for me to figure out. We can see it's kind of difficult for us to force that. Now, I could, and absolutely I could, go into the XML and start to edit the XML. So we can see here, I've got my tech, couple text views and some buttons, and down here are all the buttons I've added, and we can change what they're relative to and the positioning. But that gets a little bit laborious, so let's go back to three buttons, just for simplicity. Now, if I run this, it should still look pretty good. If I run it on different size screens, it should still look about the way I had intended if we had uh, built the UI as we were. Uh, as we desired, setting up all the different uh, distances and so forth. Now let's see what can go wrong. If I take this ID here, the button in the middle, and I'm going to rename it. Instead of button 2, let's imagine this is the button to quit. So I'm going to name it BTN quit. I click out of it, and all of a sudden things get a little bit wonky. We can see up here in the top right, I now have my button quit which is still in the same place, except this button seems to have floated off. Why is that? Well, it comes down to how things are referenced. This button that floated off was referenced to a previous one that had a different name. We change the name, it thinks it's a different button, and so my layout references are no longer valid. So this kind of makes it a little bit awkward to lay out a reasonably complicated UI using a relative layout. So, what are some other options? 
If we go down to the layouts pane here, we can see that we've got grid, linear layout vertical or horizontal, the relative layout that we're familiar with now, and frame layout. I can explain frame layout quite simply in saying that frame layout can hold a single element. So if you make your UI a frame layout, it'll only hold one thing. So let me get rid of, I'll shift click all of these elements that I've added, and I'll get rid of that. And in fact, let's just get rid of everything here. I'm going to take my frame layout, and I'm going to drop it in here. I'm trying to change the layout. Maybe it's not going to let me do that very easily. I can add it to the layout. I'll just drop it on there. There we go. So now I've added it here. I can stretch it perhaps. Or I can go into my XML. Might be the simplest way. And instead of having a relative layout here, with any luck this will work. I will copy the frame layout. Now again, XML has a start and an end tag, so I've got to edit both the start and the end tags. Save it, and now I can flip back to my layout here. Now I'm dealing with a single frame. So if I drop an element into this, say a button, and then I try and drop another thing in, it's going to, uh, it may end up only showing me the one. It doesn't allow me to position it anywhere else on the screen. That's the whole idea of the frame layout. The other layouts are actually much more interesting. So let's go back. I'm going to, I'm going to make it a, put in a linear layout, and let's do a vertical one. Just for, or let's do a, yeah, vertical is what we're working with. So put in a linear vertical layout. I'm going to go back and I'm going to switch this to a, uh, a pardon me. Uh, I'm going to switch it back to a relative layout. just so that we get a bit more flexibility. The frame layout isn't very flexible. I don't want that button either, so I'll just get rid of that from the XML. And there we go. No, oh, sorry, wrong code. There we go. The relative layout, and I'll switch into here. That was previous code from another example I was running. I'll just close those in the background. Now into my linear layout that's sitting inside of my relative layout, I can place items. So let's go back here to my form widgets, and let's do buttons. I can place a few buttons, one, and you can see here I cannot put it beside it. Well, why not? Because I'm talking about a vertical linear layout. All I can do is place them vertically. So now I've got my three buttons. They're all one above the next. I can re drag them to reorder them, but they're always on top of each other. I can say here, for example, I want this to be button uh, go, and it stays where it was. I'll change the text just so we know what we're talking about here. And I think eh, both of those are one and two. Okay. So. The layouts, the linear layouts, is really nice when you want to group things together. If there's two elements that go on top of each other, or three, you make a linear layout, a vertical linear layout. Even if you're going to put a little position part of it in your UI, you can do that. So now, what I want to do is I'm going to make it so that this linear layout is only going to be down here in the bottom right. So how can I do that? Well, let's try it. So there's a few things about how we design this. So I'm going to click on the linear layout here. I'm going to stretch this out so I can see a little bit more of my code. And I'm going to figure out how it's filling space. So there should be a wrap to parent. Let me just get a bit more here. Uh, I'm looking for the way that it's going to fill the space that it's provided. At the moment, it seems to be filling the uh, screen, the fill to parent. I want it to wrap to content. And if I don't find it here in just a second, we'll go to the old-fashioned text way. So orientate. Oh, uh, there we go. Width. 
we see here, I'll stretch that out, it's currently set the width to match parent, height to match parent. So rather than matching the parent, I'm going to wrap to the content. So width, wrap to the content. Now we see it's only as wide as the content requires. I can say height, I want to wrap to content. And now it's only as tall as the content requires. So now I can actually drag this around my UI and we see that I'm getting the same sort of thing as get before. I can center it on my screen, which is kind of cool. Or what I really wanted to do from before is I wanted to have it down here in the bottom right hand corner. Now if I want to add another but button to this, I can say, well, I want this to be inside of my linear layout. And I can double check that it happened here by looking at the way that it's structured. I can drop other things onto my screen as well. And again, I may end up fighting against the uh, the way that it wants to do the linear or the relative layouts, but uh, I can edit that as required in the XML file. So now when I go Control F11 to run it, I'm going to see the four buttons. This is the old one. Now coming up with a new one. I see the four buttons in the bottom. These are in one layout and everything is sitting inside of another layout. It's very flexible as to what you can nest inside different layouts, so keep that in mind. So imagine that I wanted to have a row of text sitting over top of buttons. So what's that going to look like? Let's create one of those. So I want to start off with a layout. I want a vertical layout, because I want text over buttons. I'm going to drop it in here, and now what I want to do is I want to have text over top of a button. Let's use small text just to keep it pretty small. I could try and drop it into this layout, but it's kind of hard to see what's going on. I can do it over here, drop it on top, and now I have text and a button. I can drop it on top, text and a button. So those two are linked together. I can click on my linear layout, and I can move it around. Of course, it moves as a group, which is fantastic. Now, what if I wanted to do this a couple times? Let me try control P, control C, control V to paste. Ah, good, it does work. So now I've got a couple of these. But what if I wanted them to be side by side? Sure, I could do it with a relative layout, but what I really want is a horizontal layout. I want them grouped together. So the trick is to keep coming up with these groupings. So I can drag in a horizontal layout, I'll put it there, and then on the side here I can reorder this. So I want my vertical layouts inside my horizontal layout. So my linear layout here has two elements inside of it, this linear layout and that linear layout. Now, the curious thing has happened here. We have placed them inside, and yet they've come up offset. So let's have a look at the XML. Sometimes it pays to see just what's going on under the hood. So we're looking for a horizontal layout, so a linear layout, and its direction should be stated as horizontal. Hmm, okay. Uh, without any orientation, it's going to be horizontal. Here we can see the orientation on this one is vertical. So what happens is we create two elements here, and down here I create two more elements in my linear layout, the text and the button. And I check for offsets. No offsets are given or applied on these. All are wrapping to contents. And this is given a margin top. So that's probably our problem. I'll delete the margin top. Double check down here that we don't have a similar margin. Nope. And I'll go back to my graphical layout. And there we see the buttons are perfectly spa are perf nicely beside each other. So you can imagine having a bunch of these. I'll copy and paste another one. Here's what I've got. The new one, I can drag it into my layout. I've got three elements in my layout. Again, something didn't look quite right on that, so I can go into my uh, file and just double check if I'm specifying a width or if I'm specifying an offset that may be uh, problematic for me here. If I was just creating them all at once, maybe it wouldn't uh, be so confused with the cut and paste, perhaps. So the margin right here uh, is just specifying where it's going to be uh, inside of the uh, uh, UI. I can get rid of that if I think it, maybe it's coming up with some sort of problem. I'll save it, go back here, 
And now it's getting back in the middle wise. Uh, let's just double check what we've got. So this is a linear layout. Another linear layout. And okay, so I'm not quite sure where that's going, but we could play with it a little bit more. Now what I can do is I can move this whole set around. I can, for example, put it in the top right. Ah, oh, that's resized there now nicely for me. I can drag it and put it just in the middle over top of that text. So I can move it around very powerfully. They stay together because I put them together in a layout. So whenever you're designing a UI, you want to think, how am I grouping it? That's your primary goal is grouping. What is grouped with what? If two things are grouped together, don't just expect a, a relative layout to do it for you. You need to set up a either a horizontal or a vertical uh, linear to make that happen. You can also work with the grid layout. It can be a little bit tricky to manage things and how they go and where they fit. Uh, so I haven't, uh, I'm not very experienced with that myself, so I tend to just stick with the linears and the relative layout for positioning. Okay, so that uh, explains the uh, demo here. Again, now I've got all these buttons, I've got all these elements. They're just UI elements, so I give them all IDs. In my Java code, I could then interact with them. I could set on-click listeners for the different buttons. I could change the text programmatically, or I could set it up so that it, it's changed inside of my uh, strings.xml file. Uh, thank you, and have a good day.